Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video here in the preview event for the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So thanks again to Wizards for having me. And today we're taking a look at a pretty spicy blue-white artifact deck featuring a lot of artifacts from the big score, which is kind of an expansion within the Outlaws of Thunder Junction, but you'll still be able to open these cards within the Outlaws boosters. And one of them is Simulacrum Synthesizer, a three mana artifact. All it does when it enters the battlefield is let us scry two, so it doesn't have the biggest impact when we play it, but whenever another artifact with mana value 3 or greater enters under our control, we get to make one of these construct tokens, which grows with the number of artifacts we control. So while it doesn't do anything immediately when we play it, it will get out of hand the more artifacts we play. And the Synthesizer combos quite well with a World Walker Helm, another new artifact. For one and a blue we can tap it to create a token that's a copy of target artifact token we control. So it can start copying the constructs after triggering the Synthesizer and making the first one. And then whenever we create an artifact token with the Helm in play, instead we get to create that many tokens plus an additional map token, which even if we never sacrifice it to explore, will still increase the overall artifact count to help grow all the constructs we have on the battlefield, so that can also get out of hand pretty quickly. So with just these two artifacts we can already kind of make an engine where we create a construct token each turn and an additional map token, but things can get really out of hand if we add three steps ahead to that equation. So this is one of those new spree cards, so it's quite flexible. We can cast this as a three mana counter spell essentially, or we can maybe cast this as a four mana instant, creating a token that's a copy of an artifact or a creature we control, and that's definitely the fun mode here and of course if we have even more mana available we can also kind of mix and match and choose multiple modes at once so this card is also quite versatile and powerful so if we do end up copying one of our artifacts, we can now make a token copy of the Simulacrum Synthesizer. It will still have mana value 3, so it still triggers all the synthesizers we already have on the battlefield. But now we can, instead of copying the Construct token, just copy the Synthesizer token itself. So instead of making one extra Construct each turn, it will be this exponential growth where we make more and more tokens turn after turn by using Helm to copy it. So that's also a lot of fun. And then to kind of round out the deck, we also have Assimilation Aegis, which gives us a bit of removal, can exile an opposing creature until the Aegis leaves the battlefield, and we can even equip one of our creatures to turn it into a copy of the exiled card, so that can also come in handy. And then at 2 mana, we've got a little bit of mana acceleration with a Fabrication Foundry, can also maybe get artifacts back from the graveyard. Sten naming artifact can give them a 1 mana discount, and then the Iron Crag is legendary, so we're just playing the one copy, but can also help us ramp. And then at 3 mana, we're also playing the full set of Urza, Lord Protector, discounting artifact, instant, and sorcery cards by one. So it works quite well with three steps ahead, as well as all the other artifacts in our deck. And of course, we're also playing it alongside the Might Stone and Weak Stone to potentially meld the two into our Urza Planeswalker, which can make even more artifact tokens with these soldiers and can also draw, give us discounts, gain us life, and maybe set up the minus 10 where we wipe the opponent's board. So that's also a lot of fun if we can pull it off. And we can use our Might Stone as well as maybe Power Stone tokens from Thrain Spider to help pay for the transformation on Urza. So that's also good to keep in mind. And Thrain Spider is perfect here as an artifact creature that triggers Synthesizer and also makes a Power Stone token which we can combine with a Helm to make even more of them. And then we can maybe even use a 7 man ability to look for additional artifacts. If we're kind of uh, maybe sitting on our counter spell and don't need to cast it, we can use the ability instead. And then at 4 mana we've got a Thousand Moon Smithy, which is pretty similar to the Synthesizer, also makes one of those large Construct tokens, and then we can potentially even transform it into a land that can make additional Construct tokens whenever we tap it to cast an artifact, so that's also quite powerful. And then we already mentioned the Might Stone and Weak Stone can also be used as removal, or maybe you can draw two cards and then can immediately tap for mana that we can spend on other artifacts, or maybe to pay for abilities. And then our mana base has two copies of Myrix, which can also pump out Artifact Might tokens, which synergize with the rest of our deck. Field of Ruin to deal with opposing utility lands. Blast Zone to maybe deal with a bunch of 1-drops out of the more aggressive decks. And of course, if you look at this list, we've got a ton of 3-drops, so we're kind of slow out of the gates. So very aggressive decks can definitely punish this sort of strategy. So if you're trying this in the ranked ladder, you'll probably need to add a few sweepers to the deck as well. And then we've got uh, Anchorage, which is also quite synergistic, making map tokens if we manage to attack with our 2-3 flyer. 
And then I'm also a fan of the archive since we can just play it on turn one to surveil and kind of set up our hand a bit better. And then a few more dual lands with deserted beach, the channel lands for added interaction, and a couple basics. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keeper missing some higher impact artifact, but starting with double foundry is nice. Turn one hopeless nightmare to make me discard. Maybe one foundry can go. And definitely want to keep the synthesizer. So we'll start by playing foundry. The next turn we could double spell Iron Crag and Synthesizer. Boden makes his discard again. Okay, so with three steps ahead, it's going to be pretty exciting if we can uh, copy some of our artifacts and then copy the token with Helm. So we've got all the pieces we need. But the uh, question is if our opponents can make us discard some irrelevant cards. Get to scry. Yeah, I guess I keep both. Insurance in case they make me discard the current three steps ahead. Now they could shuffle our deck with Field of Ruin to kind of undo my scry, but that's okay. Besiege the mirror with Bargain, so they might be trying to assemble a combo here. Maybe get a blood letter. And then next turn, the 5 mana sorcery can win the game. Yep. Well, definitely we'll have to keep up the counter spell. Although we can still play Helm in the meantime. Uh, assuming I use Foundry. That works. Make a token, already a 6-6. Six, six. And then if we don't need to counter, we can copy a token instead. All right, opponent had the combo, so glad we had the counter spell. That would have killed us otherwise. Losing half our life total, double it with blood letter. So now we can, uh, I guess, use Iron Crag. I could use three steps ahead to copy Synthesizer, which would of course be pretty fun, but if they have another Rush of Dread in hand, I think this is probably the safer approach. And then I'll just keep the map token to increase our artifact count. So next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Archfiends doesn't really change the math too much. Although I could just counter it here. And then Bloodletter will have to stay back to chump. It's a shame we didn't get to copy Synthesizer, because that's when we really go off once we can use Helm to make additional Synthesizers, making in turn more Constructs. But even with two tokens you can see how quickly things can get out of hand. So yeah, can attack. And then we can also activate Mirax to make an additional token. So we should have plenty. And then we want to copy the one that's being blocked in case they have removal. And hit you for 12. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Start with Archive. We'll look for maybe a two mana play or just an extra land will be fine. With Urza, we also wouldn't mind the Mindstone and Weakstone. And then we've got a pretty balanced hand with a bit of ramp, some removal, counter spell, or a way to copy a creature or artifact. So yeah, Iron Crag, I guess I'll take. Can play turn two. It's 
So if I really wanted to, we could keep up uh, three steps ahead. Opponent ramping with glimpse out of a red-green deck. I think I'm uh, happy just playing a Thran Spider here. Hopefully they can't use the Power Stone. I wouldn't be able to double spell Urza and uh, the Aegis next turn. Opponent with another Glimpse. Alright, Field of Ruin can maybe hit their creature land. So, could do that now if we'd like. And then I can still play Urza. Don't know if it's quite time yet to keep up our uh, counter spell. Can hit for two. So next turn our opponent will have six mana. Seven is usually the scary spot. So let's try Urza. And then next turn I can maybe activate the Thrain Spider's ability. If we don't need to counter anything. And Iron Cry can stay as a mana producing artifact. Opponent running out Buseju, which could have gotten channeled, so they may not have a ton of other lands in hand. And yep, one's gonna main phase surprise, was hoping they would pass a turn instead, putting in Calamity and Terror of the Peaks, so that's definitely a combo here. So they get to copy Terror, make a bunch of copies of Terror of the Peaks, and those all deal damage. Well, turns out I should have kept up my counterspell. So we're super dead here. Well, that was an unexpected combo. But there you have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand? It's a little clunky. Two lands. If we get to three, we can play Spider, which gets us closer to Mindstone. But uh, no double blue either. I'll take a mulligan. Okay, this is probably a little better. Start with, let's say, Anchorage, and wait until we have a bit more info before we surveil. And I'll keep a land. Opponent also blue-white, but not quite the same type of deck. Okay, so I'll play Spider. Even though we could use Aegis now on the Hermit before they uh, can keep it up to counter author spells. Yeah, I guess that's kind of needed here. And then next turn we can maybe play Thrain Spider. Alright, there's green mana too. And Kellen joins up. A wedding announcement in exile. Okay, I'll keep Blast Zone as a surprise for now. Might change some of their decision making. Play Spider. And then it's uh, two mana to equip Aegis. The Helm can start copying our Power Stone token, perhaps. And Danik is next. And wedding announcements. Okay, Simulacrum's great, although we do have to watch out for potential counter spells here. So let's see, if I were to equip Thrain Spider, then I guess it would become a copy of Hermit, although it's only going to be a 2-1, so not the best blocker, but it would allow me to maybe counter back a counter spell. 
Yeah, I guess that's maybe worth it. Right, they're gonna get Lost Spider, that's fine. And then I'll play Synthesizer. And Mindstone and Weakstone seems decent. And then probably don't need a second helm, even though if we get to three steps ahead, copy Synthesizer, double helm would kind of go crazy. But yeah, we'll keep Mightstone as a bit of interaction. That can still tap for mana. Opponent plotting Dust Animus, and Dorothea is next. Okay, so do we want to take out Dorothea? Or uh, probably just go for Denik. And then we can still play World Waker Helm afterwards. So we've got a pair of 10 10 constructs already. And next turn we maybe get to have some fun with three steps ahead. Although we are facing quite a lot of power and toughness in the air. Dorothea attacks. We'll get sacrificed. Okay, so how much mana will we need for three steps ahead? If I want to both copy an artifact and counter a spell, that's uh, six mana total. So I'm a little bit short right now. Could potentially explore with a map token, even though that will shrink down my constructs. And also need to make sure I don't die on the board. But we can also copy, uh, I guess, the Aegis to remove a creature. So I think I send in one Construct. If I send in both, I guess I could present lethal out of nowhere. So, close call. Yeah, if I attack with both, they're both probably going to get chumped. Which is not a bad place to be. Opponent's going to take it. So now I can use Helm to copy... Probably just a Construct token. And that would be lethal already, so we can just let damage happen, alright? Otherwise we still had three steps ahead available to either counter or maybe copy a token, which would have been pretty fun here with all these artifact engines. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Iron Crag into Spider, ramp out Mightstone. And then have some fun with three steps ahead, potentially copying our artifact. Facing Grixis. So it might be a deck trying to commit some crimes. Now a face down card. Well, there's a few ways that uh, could set up a combo of some sort. I think I still play Thrain Spider here. Urza now also quite tempting with a Might Stone in hand. But uh, I think we play Spider for now. And then next turn I might end up playing the Might Stone, which can help pay for the ward as well. Ooh, Greed's Gambit, I see. So this must be the Falcon that's face down to try and give us the Greed's Gambit. So definitely want to take out this face down card while we can. So play Mightstone. And that can pay for the ward. And we'll hang back. So there's the Coveted Falcon. 
the best way to give someone a greed gambit in standard. Uh oh, there's another one. So yeah, now we'll have to every turn sack a creature and discard. Now I can play Urza. And then it's seven mana to meld. So I wouldn't be able to do that quite yet. Although we're getting kind of close. So sure, play Urza. Keep up three steps ahead. Which I can cast thanks to the discount. So we'll discard probably another Urza. Sank Spider. And pass it back. So we need to protect Urza at all costs. Opponent's gonna steal their token back. So I'll need to draw an untapped land in order to both transform Urza and counter something. Don't think Preacher is worth countering. Did not draw the untapped land. So now if I pay to meld Urza, our opponent can take it out in response. But if I don't do it now, then I would either have to animate Anchorage or maybe play a Synthesizer and sack a token. Yeah, maybe it's still worth waiting here. So let's just make mana with Mightstone. I guess if I want to play both Synthesizers, I won't have double blue up for three steps ahead. To counter. So yeah, this is rough. Feels like they have a removal for Urza. Yeah, I think I just have to go for it. I don't think Synthesizer is gonna get there. Alright, that actually worked. Now I have to decide what to do next. So we can undraw a bunch. Okay, and then discard probably one three steps ahead. And then if I play Smithy, I'll just have to sacrifice it to the Greed's Gambit, so it's not all that amazing. But it does get this artifact in play. And then next turn, I would need to tap five untapped artifacts, so that's probably not happening. Alright, in that case I'll just pass. And discard one Synthesizer. Opponent attacking Urza. Only a fool provokes a greater power. We can potentially get rid of the Greed's game, but next turn. But then I'll have to lose six and sack three creatures and discard three cards. Avarice may be looking for another Greed's Gambit. And Preacher. Well, we can uh, kind of go off with Urza, I guess. So, discount stuff. Play Synthesizer to scry before we potentially draw. And then Aegis would be decent. Three steps ahead I can maybe keep as a follow-up. And we already have one in hand. And then let's see, start with Smithy. Trigger Synthesizer as well. It is legendary, so if I play another I'll have to sack one. And then probably just make some soldiers. And 
and then discard Smithy. Keep up three steps ahead. So we'll have to trade for the Preachers. Don't start fights you can't finish. And a Torture Tower I could counter. Or I can keep three steps ahead to copy the... Uh, Synthesizer, which is pretty neat, although I don't have the way to copy tokens. So I guess I'll just uh, protect it here. And Archfiend is next, another card that pairs well with Falcon to kind of gift the opponent to win the game. Alright, I guess we'll transform this. And then what to do with Urza. So I can play Aegis, get rid of Archfiends, and then plus and minus Urza to get rid of this uh, Greed's Gambit, basically. Sure. I am Urza Planeswalker. Or I can just leave the Gambit around, sign the Soldier token to it. Although I will lose Urza next turn. So maybe this is my chance to get rid of the Gambit. I have no use for you. And then at least I have uh, this Barracks to maybe pull ahead. Do have an anchorage which can maybe block, but uh, that's a stretch. All right, there's another gambit. More tokens, which are also just gonna kill me. Don't have many ways to deal with that many flying tokens. So yeah, had we mapped out our game plan a little bit better. Maybe try and counter the Greed's Gambit to begin with. This experiment has concluded. And Tiny Bones is next. Bonus got removal for days, but go for the throat, not the best in this matchup. Alright, found Helm. So that's pretty nifty here. But yeah, we're still dead on board. Can lose to our own Archfiend. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, this seems keepable enough. Just need to hit our lane drops, and then Foundry ramps out double synthesizer. Iron Crag doesn't seem super needed. A lens is probably better. Opponent Bant Colors. I 
that resolves. And a Virtue makes a token, so it could be a plus one counter deck. Kellen lets them play an extra land. And they're just immediately going to sack the clue. That's fine. They're probably playing the Grizzled Genius to discount their adventures. For now, play Synthesizer. Or I guess we can just play Smithy. Which will immediately make a blocker. Even though playing Synthesizer first would maybe give us more tokens in the long run. And then next turn we have a few options. Kellen is kind of a problem, I guess, since it can destroy our artifacts. So we want to take that out with our Might Stone. And hit for four. So next turn we could double Synthesizer, which is a pretty good turn. Kellen the Kid to set up a large Dust Animus next turn as kind of a 4-5 flying a lifelink. Okay, um, I think we stick to the plan. Don't need Foundry. And then a Thrain Spider might not be a bad draw. And we'll hit for seven. Opponent chumps. So I can always play a replacement Might Stone plus Thrain Spider next turn just to trigger Synthesizer a bunch. And Dust Animus. And now Collector's Cage. Which can maybe cheat something expensive into play. Put him back up to 19. And Virtue. We'll put the Dust Animus out of range from Mindstone and Weakstone, giving minus 5. So that's a bit of a concern. Do we want to transform Smithy? Um, would mean having to tap Mindstone, perhaps, or I can tap one of my attackers. Uh, sure. Make some more tokens. And hit for 10. So if we had one more artifact to tap, we might have been able to force them to trump. So yeah, that's quite the army of constructs. Kind of impressed by the deck, to be honest. It's not always easy to visualize how many tokens you're going to end up with a card like Synthesizer. And now World Waker Helm can also help grow the team. We've got three steps ahead, which can also come in handy. So we've got quite a few options. Um, I guess we want to play Thrain Spider using the Barracks. Make even more tokens, because why not? And then at this point, attack all out, can use three steps ahead to copy an artifact, which could also help grow the team if we'd like. And it's always good to copy Synthesizer, since that way we can copy the Synthesizer token with World Waker Helm, which uh, is also pretty nifty. Alright, so it's a lot of 18 powered constructs, or constructs if you prefer the uh, original nomenclature, but uh, yeah, that's a pretty sweet deck. Get to rank up as well. So all in all, there's a couple ways you can build around Synthesizer in Standard. You could go with uh, Brass Knuckles or 
skitter beam battalion approach as a way to immediately make a ton of constructs all at once and that's probably a deck we'll uh, get to at some point but for now i'm also a fan of this blue white approach just uh, kind of ramping out some expensive cards having the urza meld game plan as kind of a backup that can also make a whole bunch of tokens so it still kind of complements our game plan and then having the counter spell as a way to stop opposing combos which seem to be plentiful in this new standard as well as a way to make more artifact tokens is also great so yeah overall not a bad deck might be a little soft to the more aggressive decks on the best of one ladder thinking of monorads and the boros convoke deck so those might require us to play some main deck sweepers to kind of catch up and then eventually take over but of course the more interaction we add the fewer synergies we'll have with all these artifacts so it's always is a bit of a give and take but yeah for now I want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day